The Celtiberian epidum of Numantia was attacked more than once by Roman forces, but the siege of Numantia refers to the culminating and pacifying action of the long-running Numantine war between the forces of the Roman Republic and those of the native population of Hispania Citeria. The Numantine War was the third of the Celtiberian Wars and it broke out in 143 BC. A decade later, in 133 BC, the Roman general and hero of the Third Punic War, Scipio Emiljanus Africanus, subjugated Numantia, the chief Celtiberian city. Chapter 1 – Roman Preparation In late 135 BC, the Roman Senate reappointed Scipio consul on popular demand and sent him to Hispania to finish what lesser generals had failed to complete. Scipio found morale low among the troops stationed in Iberia. The chance of plunder being low, there were few enticements to enlistment. Scipio nevertheless raised an army of 20,000 with 40,000 allied and mercenary troops, especially Numidian cavalry led by Jugurtha. The troops were trained hard by constant marching and there were several successful skirmishes before Scipio began to surround the city of Numantia itself. He planned only to starve it out and not to storm it. Chapter 2 – Siege Works Scipio's army constructed two camps, separated by a wall around the city. He dammed the nearby swamp to create a lake between the city walls and his own. From ten feet off the ground, his archers could shoot into Numantia from seven towers interspersed along the wall. He also built an outer wall to protect his camps from any relief forces. Scipio also engineered the isolation of the city from Luduero. He towered the river at the points where it entered and exited the city and strung a cable across, with blades, to prevent both boats and swimmers from leaving or entering the city. Chapter 3 counter-attack. The Nemantines attempted one failed sally before their greatest warrior, Ritogenes, successfully led a small band of men down the river past the blockade. Heading first to the Aravasi, his pleas were ignored. He then went to Lucia, where he was positively received by the youth, but the elders of the tribe warned Scipio, who marched from Nemantia, and arrested the four hundred Lucian youths and cut off their hands. After Scipio's return, Avarus, the Numantine leader, began negotiations. Chapter 4 – Surrender The first ambassadors sent by Numantia asked for their liberty in return for complete surrender, but Scipio refused. They were killed upon return by the incredulous populace, who believed they had cut a deal with the Romans. The city refused to surrender and starvation set in. Cannibalism ensued, and eventually some began to commit suicide with their whole families. The remnant population finally surrendered only after setting their city on fire. Scipio took it and had its ruins leveled. This was late in the summer of 133. Chapter 5 – Legacy The siege of Numantia was recorded by several Roman historians that admired the sense of freedom of the ancient Iberians and acknowledged their fighting skills against the Roman legions. Miguel de Cervantes wrote a play about the event, La Numancia, which stands today as his most well-known dramatic work. More recently, Carlos Fuentes has written a short story about the event, The Two Numantias, published in his 1994 collection The Orange Tree. In 2017, the Spanish authorities organized a commemoration of the 2150th anniversary of the siege. Chapter 6 – Sources Davis, Paul K. Besieged, 100 Great Sieges from Jericho to Sarajevo. Oxford University Press, 2001